I hope that you look forward to that day when we gather before the throne singing how great thou art to the Lord. Not necessarily, I'm not just talking about that song, but we sing to him face to face how great he is. And uh, do you know this Jesus? Do you know this Lord? Do you know God in a personal way? That's really what we're looking at uh, here in, in James chapter 2. We're, we're talking, as we're working through James, we're talking about let's get real. And we talked about how real troubles are are there, and but how we can have real joy in the midst of our troubles, uh, and uh, and so we've been looking at this real walk with the Lord, and and really here in James chapter two is where he really focuses in on uh, where this reality comes from, and I hope that you understand uh, here this morning that you can have a real relationship with a real God. You can. You know, as we open up God's Word this morning here in James chapter 2, we, uh, it is the Word of God that brings supernatural clarity and conviction into our lives. It's not eloquent words. It is not the preacher, and I'm thankful it's not uh, just the, the, the preacher but it is God through His Word. There's a supernatural transaction that takes place through the Word of God. And that's what we're gathered here for this morning. And I, I want you to be ready to re receive that. And not just listening to what I have to say, but let the Word of God do its work in your heart and in your life, especially as we deal with this this crucial subject that James is dealing with and looking at a real faith and an unreal faith. What is real and what is not? And as we talk about that, understand, he's not giving us a checklist, all right? That's what a lot of times we want. We want to see if we can uh, have a checklist and if we can check all the boxes or most of the boxes, then we can feel good about ourselves. That's not what he's doing here. You don't you don't do a checklist in relationships. Your wife doesn't want you to just check some boxes, man, okay? Uh, uh, and, and, and just in doing that, there's a relationship that goes on. And, and that's what we're talking about is a relationship with, with Jesus. And, and we're going to talk about faith and what is real faith and what is not real faith uh, here this morning. And we'll carry on over into next week uh, as well. But understand this, the focus is Jesus, and when we're talking about faith, we're not talking about a checklist. We're talking about a relationship with Jesus. That's what the Bible means by faith. It is talking about a life relationship with Jesus Christ. Is he real in your life? That's really another way of looking uh, at this. So James chapter 2 Let's begin in verse 14 and go and read down through the end of the chapter where he says, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith, or literally can that type of faith, save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I'll show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that... Faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works, and by works faith was made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. 
You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Likewise was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. You see, he uses the word faith a lot here, but he's using the word faith in really two different scenarios here. There is a faith that is real, but there is also a faith or what some people call faith or many things that people call faith that is not real. We want to make sure that we have the the real thing and we want to share with people what the real thing is. And the, the difference between real faith and unreal faith is the object of our faith. And that is Jesus. If we're putting faith in ourselves, if we're putting faith in something that that we have said or something that we have done, that's different than putting your faith in Jesus. We must put our faith in Jesus. And real faith in in a real Jesus uh, comes out with a real change of life. A real different life, a real life that is lived out day to day in the works that we do. That's what he is is talking about. Now, understand as James is, is writing this letter, he's writing it primarily to those Jewish believers that have been spread uh, uh, around and they've gone, had to go out due to persecution and other things. And we talked about that back in chapter one. And so he's, he's writing to, to people who are getting the first taste of spiritual freedom. These Jews were raised in legalism and were taught all the, the, the different things that they had to do. And, it, and if you did all these things, then maybe you might make it into heaven uh, one day. And now here comes the message of the gospel and says that, that Jesus has set us free from the law, that we are, are, are set free. And so if you carry that too far, if you carry it away from the truth of what Jesus was preaching, then you begin to to make wrong application and begin to say, well, if there's no more law and we're all under grace, then you can do whatever you want to do. And James is saying, no, 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 no. You don't understand what real faith is. And real faith will not lead you down a pathway of just giving yourself into whatever the body and the flesh wants. That's not real faith. Real faith is, changes you. Real faith is not about us getting what we want, but it's about giving Jesus what he deserves and having a relationship with him. The question of salvation is this, do you know Jesus? Do you know him? It's not what have you done, but do you know him? And if you know him, your life will be changed. This afternoon, I'll be going down to Russellville and doing the funeral of one of my best friends for the last 20 or more years. Um, uh, Barry Cummins has been a good friend of mine over the years and, and everything, and I have the privilege of, of doing his funeral this afternoon. He went home to be with the Lord this past Wednesday, and, and he would share his testimony with anybody and everybody, anybody that asked, and if they didn't ask, he'd still share. Uh, and uh, he was saved back in, in 2001, a few years before I, I met him. And uh, he was, uh, he'd been through a lot of things in his life, a lot of unique things in his life. I could go on and on uh, of, of his experiences. But, but there in 2001, he had had a uh, open heart surgery, had four bypasses at a, at a very young age. Uh, he's the same age as, as I am uh, now uh, and everything. So he was, he was real young when he went through all of this. And, and coming out of that and, and really looking at the frailty of life and, and others witnessing to him and sharing the gospel with him over the years and especially during that time in his life as he was recovering from that, it was uh, I think a few months after that, he actually was at his mom's uh, graveside. It was his mom's birthday, and he had gone to put flowers on her graveside. And the Holy Spirit just got a hold of him as he had been thinking about it, driving down to Hackleburg and uh, and was thinking about uh, those things. And once he got out there, he just couldn't take another step as the Holy Spirit was dealing with him. And he bowed his knees right there at his mom's graveside and gave his life to Jesus Christ. And 
surrendered to him. And there in a cemetery, God gave him new life, new life. And I tell you, his life was changed. His life was changed. Have you experienced the new life of Christ? If you have not, then your faith may be an unreal faith. That's what James is trying to clarify. This is real serious stuff that he is clarifying here. And as we get into this, as we look at the real faith and the unreal faith, I want us, first of all, to come to a, a true understanding. Uh, there in, in verse 14, he says, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith, can that type of faith, he's not talking about faith in general. He's not contradicting what's taught in other places in the Bible. But he's saying, can that faith, matter of fact, there is uh, a, uh, uh, an article in front of this word faith and it's referring back to what he just said, the, the faith that is there when he says a faith that does not have works. Can that type of faith save him? Is that type of faith Real is, is, is what he is asking here. And so as he's talking about this relationship between faith and, and, and works, it's important that we understand this so that we can understand what is not real and what is real. I was, when I was uh, back in the, in, the, in the 80s, when I was uh, in the youth group there at uh, Tate Street Baptist Church in Corinth, uh, Brother James Lewis, y'all know Brother James, he's been here several times and, and preached for us. Uh, here. He was my youth minister, and one of the things he did as a youth minister, he just took us through the Word of God, and he took us through the book of James. And there's some things that I learned back there. I'm fixing to share with you some of that uh, here that had carried me through even as, as, a, as a youth uh, after I was saved. But the principles are true, and that is this. First of all, some want to say, this is the way some want to describe salvation. Some want to say that salvation is totally a faith. In other words, faith Minus works equals salvation. All that, that matters is, is faith. So faith minus works equals salvation. They say all that's, that matters is just that you believe. Just, just say a prayer that says that you believe and, and do whatever you want, kind of like what we were talking about with, with some of those early Christians that were mixed up. Uh, do whatever you want to and everything. It's all covered just as long as, as you believe. Faith minus works equals salvation. That's wrong. No, <laughs> that, 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 that's wrong. Uh, that's what he's saying here in James 2.14. He's saying that's not true. Can, can that type of faith save him? The answer is no, no. If someone says he has faith but does not have any works, there's, there's nothing has changed in that person's life, their life has not changed, then that faith is, is, is not real. Faith without fruit is an unreal faith. It's, an, it's faulty from the, the very beginning there. You can, you can have confession just because you say you've got faith, just because you say you believe doesn't mean that you truly believe in the biblical way. You can have confession without possession. And what really matters is that you possess the Lord Jesus Christ and possess the life that he has for us. And so faith minus works equals salvation, wrong. And then some folks want to flip it the other way, say, well, if that's wrong, then this must be right. They want to say works minus faith equals salvation. They want to say that all that matters is works. In order to be saved, you just need to work hard. You need to do everything that the, that the Bible says here and, and even some things that the Bible doesn't say. And just if you get to the end and, and the good in your life outweighs the, the, the bad in your life, if there's more good than, than, than bad there, then, then you'll make it. The problem is, is there's never been anybody on the face of the earth other than Jesus Christ that's been able to do that because he didn't have any bad. As a matter of fact, you remember what we talked about last week. If you've done one, then you've sinned in all. And so that, that's, that's impossible, but some people think that they can do that. And so they, that's all that matters is your works. That's wrong. That's, eh, that's wrong, okay? And over in, in Romans chapter 10, you remember, and the Bible doesn't contradict itself. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 uh, says there that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. All right? If you believe, 
Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And so belief is very important. And who you believe in is essential to a, a real faith. Is your faith in Jesus. It, it is it's Jesus that saves, not me. I cannot save myself. You remember what Jesus said in, in Matthew chapter 7 when he was separating the sheep from the goats there, when he was telling that, 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 that story there. What was it that the, the goats said? They said, you know, when he said, depart from me, they said, but didn't we do this? Didn't we do that? Didn't we do all of, uh, of these things? And, and Jesus said, that, he said, no, you're practice. Yes, you practice, but you practice lawlessness. You see, even the, the good things we do are, 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 that we do in the flesh are sin in the eyes of God. We, you know, that's, oh, Bible says in Romans chapter 14 and verse 23, whatever is not a faith is sin. And so if we're doing things not a faith, if we're doing things that with the wrong reason, with the, in the wrong way, then, then those works are, are not good. Whatever is done of the flesh is sin. And so we can do a lot of good works in the flesh and works in and of itself will not save anybody. Jesus told those who had said they had done all these different things, he said, I never knew you. So works minus faith is not right. And some say, okay, this is what it is. It is faith plus works equals salvation. That's That's got to be it, right? It's both. We we believe, and we believe in Jesus, but then we also do all these other things as well. And if we, we do enough and believe enough, then we will be okay, right? Or if we do enough, if we believe the right thing, and then we do all these things, then when at least we won't lose it, right? And, and that's why some folks say, no, wrong again. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible nowhere teaches that faith plus works equals salvation. You remember what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, he said, for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. He doesn't say not of works alone. He says not of works at all. Not of works lest anyone should boast. Understand this, salvation is all God, not me. It is all Jesus. It is all grace. It is all faith. It is none of me. I just respond to what Jesus does by believing in him. Faith plus works equals salvation is not correct either. Well, what is correct? What is true? This is what Brother James shared with us, and, and this is what the Bible teaches, is this, is that faith equals salvation equals works. That's what the Bible teaches. Faith equals salvation, and faith that produces salvation will produce works. Faith equals salvation Equals work. Now understand what we mean by faith. Faith is, uh, Paul uh, describes in the Hebrews, he says that it is the conviction of what is unseen. It is when what we cannot see with our eyes, God and, and all this work that he has done and stuff, it becomes real in our lives. It is, that's what faith is. This becomes real. It is a real relationship with the unseen God. What does it mean to have faith? It means you believe in him. You trust in him. You're trusting, yes, in his word, but you're trusting in his love and you're trusting in his presence and you're trusting in his promises and you're trusting in his power and you're putting your trust in him. You're entering into a relationship with him as Lord and Savior of your life. That's, that's what it means, faith. 
It is, it is not just believing facts in our head, but it is entering into a relationship with the unseen God. It's the evidence of things not seen, that we don't see this God with our physical eye, but we know he is real. We know he is our, our Savior and Lord. We have given our life to him, and we have this relationship with him. That type of faith produces salvation. Salvation, when you think of salvation, a lot of times what do we think of? We think about heaven. And heaven is a result of salvation, but heaven is not the salvation. When you think of salvation, this is what we ought to think of. We ought to think of life. That's what it means to be saved. It means to be rescued from death and brought into life. It means to be freed from the penalty of sin and brought into a life of freedom. It is to be dead in our sins and raised to a new life. That's what salvation is. Salvation is life. It's not just a place in heaven, but it is real life, a living, breathing relationship with a real God that produces abundant life, joy in the midst of our trials, strength in the midst of, uh, of temptation, and one day will take us to heaven where we experience a forever eternal life with Jesus there. That's what salvation is. And real faith produces real salvation. And a real faith that produces a real salvation will produce fruit or works in a life. We don't do the works to be saved. We do the works because we are saved. That's what we're talking about here. Works is the fruit. Faith is the root. Salvation is the, the blessing. It's the life. And then here comes the fruit of works that honor Christ. And works can be different in in individuals' lives. Understand that because God calls us to different ministries. God calls us and we have different giftings and different things and, and everything that God calls you to do. Now, some things are, are, are very clear about righteous living and things like that, but everything that God calls you to do and how God works in your life is not the same that he's called somebody else to do and how he works in their life, and that's okay. It's a relationship. But this life produces fruit. Not every saved life looks the same, but every saved life produces fruit that honors Jesus. Faith equals salvation, which produces or equals works in our lives. So we got that? Then you ought to begin to understand the unreal faith that he's talking about here. Here in this passage, he deals with in James chapter 2, he deals with real faith, but he also deals with an unreal faith. Notice this unreal faith that, that he mentions here uh, in these verses. First of all, it is a non-saving faith. Unreal faith. Any faith other than what we've talked about here is an unreal faith. And an unreal faith is a non-saving faith. He says, again, verse 14, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith, can that unreal faith save him? And the answer is no. No. What do we mean? by it, it doesn't have any life. If there's no life, if there's no Jesus life, if there's no change, if there's no freedom, if there's no presence, if there's no possession of the Holy Spirit and, and work of the Holy Spirit in someone's life, it is a non-saving faith. You can call it whatever you want to. You can even call it a real faith, but it's not. It's an unreal faith. There's no fruit because there's no root. And, 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 and the root produces that, that, that salvation. Saying that you believe is not enough. I mean, I can stand up here and tell you that I'm skinny. All right? That doesn't mean that I am. Understand that. Just because you want to go to heaven and therefore you say, I'm going to heaven, that doesn't mean you're going to heaven. Do you have a real faith in a real Jesus? Do you, do you know him? Does he know you? If it's not that faith, it is a non-saving faith. A non-saving faith. If we're saved, 
there will be life. There will be a fruit, a, a growing fruit bearing in our lives of the life of Jesus within us. Not that we're perfect, but Jesus will work with us to produce fruit in our lives. A non-saving faith. An unreal faith is also a no good faith. A no good faith. Look at what he says there in verse 15 and 16 where he says, if a brother or sister is naked and destitute or daily of food and one of you, and by one of you he's saying one of you that claims to have faith. You, you say you've got faith. You say that you believe and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled. But you do not give them the things which are needed for the body. What does it profit? Now you understand what he's saying. The power to save and the power to do is not in our words. It's in his word. Jesus saves. And a faith that just says things but doesn't have that, that fruit in our lives, it is a no good faith. What does it profit? What good does it do? The word for, for profit there, it means to be beneficial. It means to be helpful. It means to be, to be a, a, a blessing. And so a true faith, it, it is good. It is good to others because the Jesus in us, this life of Jesus in us, he's constantly leading us. He's constantly telling us. He's equipping us. He's given us boldness and courage to be a blessing to others, to point people to Jesus. That's the way we don't always obey that because our, we still have this battle in our flesh, but that's what Jesus is working in us. And when we don't obey him, he convicts us. And sometimes we go back and say, well, I should have done it. Jesus was telling me to do it the other day. The Holy Spirit was leading me to do it and I didn't do it, but here I am now. And so that's cause. What is that? That's Jesus in us. That's the life in us. He, he works in us to, to live a life that is good for others, that is a, a blessing to others, that, that blesses God, that honors God. Because when that, that life that is within us, when, when people come and, and say, hey, why, why did you do this? Or they want to come and praise us. We say, no, it was God. It was Jesus. It wasn't me. And we reflect the praise up to, to him. And it's beneficial to ourselves. It, it brings us joy. It gives us direction. He helps us to, to gain the victory. And so it is a, a good faith. And so if our faith that we have, if there's no good benefit of it, if there's no good results of it, then it's not real. Because if you have Jesus in you, the Jesus in you is a good. He is good. Matter of fact, Back in James chapter 1, what did James say? He said, every good and perfect gift comes not from me, comes from him, comes from above. Now, he didn't say most good. He didn't say a lot of good. He said every good. Every good. You say, well, what about the good things that we do here? If it's not from Jesus, if it's from the flesh done with wrong motives, it's not good. And if it's good, it's from him. When I preach, if anything good happens, it's from him. And when it's me, nothing good. Nothing good. You see, unreal faith is a no good faith. And the only way good that it's going to make an eternal difference in this world, in our life, and the lives of those around us. The only way any good's going to come is from a real faith, not an unreal faith. An unreal faith is also a dead faith. He says there in verse 17, he says, Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. And then he says again in verse 6, he says, For us, the, uh, yeah, verse 26, he says, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Dead. So unreal faith is a dead faith. Dead faith means no life, no fruit, no activity of God. There's no life in me. I'm just trying to mimic what other people are doing. It doesn't bring life to others because... 
I'm not doing things for the right reasons. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to mimic others and others can see through the, the charade. Sometimes they can see through it better than we can. And there's no life because there's no God. That, this, is, this is dangerous. This, listen, this is very dangerous. It's eternally dangerous for us to try to come up with some kind of faith other than the real faith and a real God, a real relationship with Jesus. If we try to say, well, this is faith in that, it's, it's going to lead people to death. It's going to lead us to death if we buy into it. And if we preach that and teach that to others, it's going to lead them to death. That's why false teachers are eternally dangerous when they preach death and not life. Oh, they may sound good. They may be eloquent speakers. They may be, have funny stories to tell. But if they're not preaching true faith in God, if they're preaching that you're saved by anything else other than Jesus Christ, it is a false faith. And it is dead. And it brings death. So do we know life or do we know death? He also says in verse 19 that an unreal faith is a demonic faith. Verse 19, he says, you believe that there is one God. That is a type of faith. But obviously he's not talking about real faith when he says you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. You understand that the, the demons have a faith in Jesus. What do we mean by that? Well, if we're talking about faith being knowledge, the, the demons have all the knowledge. They know who Jesus is. They know that Jesus is the Son of God. They, they know that Jesus lived a perfect life. They, they know all the elements of the, the gospel and of the life of Jesus Christ. They know that Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world. They know that on the third day, Jesus was resurrected from the dead. They know that. They know that the only way to the Father, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and life, and no man comes to the Father but by Him. They know all that. They believe that it's true. They know that it's true. But one thing the devil and his demons will never do, and that is bow the knee to Jesus Christ. Real faith enters into a lordship relationship with Jesus where he becomes my life, and as my life, he is my Lord. He is my Savior, and He is a part of every moment of every day, and I want to live for Him. I have His strength. I have His power to live for Him every moment of every day. An unreal faith is a demonic faith, and then finally, an unreal faith is a useless faith. Look in verse 20 where he says, But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? He uses the word dead here, but it's a, it's a different word that is used here. It's the, the Greek word arge. He had been talking about death as far as no life is concerned. And this word here means that there's no power. So it's the idea, that you can see why it would be translated dead and everything, but it's the idea of, of it doesn't work. There's, there's no power. It is useless. So in other words, if we, if we try to come up with some type of, of faith in our, in our own way that fits our own lifestyle rather than the, the biblical real faith that Jesus is calling us to, there'll be no power there. There'll be no power to help others. There'll be no ability to glorify God. There'll be no strength to, to do what is right and to resist temptation. There will be no eternal power that will save our souls. It's useless. It's useless. So the question arises, is what about our faith? 
Is, is, is my faith real or unreal? This is very weighty matter that James is dealing with here, but it is, it's essential. It's what Jesus was talking about with Nicodemus there in John chapter 3 when he said, Nicodemus, you're a religious man, but you must be born again. You must. You must. Have you been born again? Is it real? Is this not, did you walk down the aisle? Not how many times have you been baptized? Not, is your relationship with Jesus real? Not are you perfect? But do you have a real relationship with a real Jesus that produces real life in you? and through you. That's the works that he's talking about. Do you have that?